हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू टू माई लेक्चर ऑन कंडीशनिंग एंड कंडीशन नंबर वन देर विल बी टू लेक्चर ऑन दिस टॉपिक दिस फर्स्ट लेक्चर आफ्टर दैट वी विल हैव सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑन दिस टॉपिक कंडीशनिंग एंड कंडीशन नंबर वन कंडीशनिंग पर्टेंस टू दी पर्टरवेशन बिहेवियर ऑफ ए मैथमेटिकल प्रॉब्लम ए प्रॉब्लम मे बी ब्यूड एज ए फंक्शन एफ फ्रॉम एक्स इन टू बाई वेयर एक्स एंड बाई आर नॉम्ड वैक्टर स्पेसिस आर यू कैन से नॉम्ड लीनियर स्पेसिस एक्स इज द नॉन वैक्टर स्पेस ऑफ डाटा एंड बाई इज द नॉन वैक्टर स्पेस ऑफ सोल्यूशंस एफ इज ए फंक्शन फ्रॉम एक्स इन टू बाई वेयर एक्स एंड बाई आर नॉम्ड वैक्टर स्पेसिस वैक्टर स्पेस इज ऑल्सो टर्म्ड एज ए लीनियर स्पेस सो एक्स एंड वाई आर नॉम लीनियर स्पेसिस Uh, as you know, a vector space is one uh, where we have a collection of sub, uh, objects, uh, say B, equipped with two operations denoted by addition and uh, scalar multiplication, and we have a field of scalars. B is called a vector space. with respect to the operations of vector addition and scalar multiplication if uh, over the field f if it is uh, uh, b is an abelian group with respect to addition now addition is a binary operation on b means when x and y are any two vectors in b then x plus y belongs to b and uh, corresponding to the uh, abelian group we have associativity if we take vectors u v w in b then u plus b plus w is equal to u plus b plus w so we must be associative with respect to addition then commutativity where we say if you take any two vectors u and b in b then u plus b is equal to b plus u then we have existence of additive identity so existence of identity must be there that means there exist a vector which we denote by 0 in b such that u plus 0 is equal to u for all u belonging to b and then we have existence of additive inverse so to to each u belonging to b there must exist a vector denoted by minus u in b such that u plus minus u is equal to zero vector the zero additive identity in v and uh, uh, we have so if we have all these properties in b then we said to be uh, an abelian group with respect to addition and then uh, corresponding to scalar multiplication in the scalar multiplication what uh, it, it is uh, if you take a scalar alpha belongs to f and a vector u belongs to b then alpha into u belongs to f so uh when alpha belongs to f and u belongs to b then alpha into u will be there in b so b is, is closed with respect to scalar multiplication then it should satisfy uh, the following four properties if we have alpha beta belonging to f and u belonging to b then alpha beta u 
equal to alpha beta into u and then we have uh, the scalar multiplication is distributive over addition alpha into u plus b equal to alpha u plus alpha b. A scalar multiplication is distributive over vector addition and then we have third alpha plus beta into u is equal to alpha u plus beta u and the fourth one is multiplicative identity 1 into u is equal to u for all u belonging to b where 1 belongs to f the field of scalars. So, if v satisfies all these uh, properties we say that v is a vector space with respect to addition and scalar multiplication. Now, it is called a normed vector space or a normed linear space if we de further define a, a function denoted by this from b into r such that norm of b is greater than or equal to 0 for all b belonging to b, norm of b is equal to 0 if and only if b is equal to 0 and then norm of alpha into b is equal to mod of alpha norm of b where alpha is the scalar in f and then we have norm of u plus b less than or equal to norm of u plus norm of b okay, where u and b are any two vectors in b. So, if b is equipped with this uh, function or uh, defined on v into r okay, then we say that b is a normed vector space. So, here a function a problem may be viewed as a function from a norm linear space x into a norm linear space by uh, where x is the space of vector space of data and by the vector space of solutions. Now, a well conditioned problem is one with the property that all small perturbations of x lead to only a small changes in f x. That means, if you uh, 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 make a small perturbation in the uh, input data x, then corresponding to this that there must be a very small change in the value of f x, then the problem is said to be a well conditioned problem. Now, that that uh, uh, change in the data may be due to an error or it may be uh, done by us. So, some if we uh, if there is a small error in the data uh, input data x then corresponding to that in the uh, uh, value of f x there must be a small change. Then we say that the problem is well conditioned otherwise the problem is said to be ill conditioned. So, if so this means that a problem is well conditioned if x dash is approximately equal to x implies that f x dash is approximately equal to f x otherwise the problem is said to be ill conditioned. So, we can define an ill conditioned problem as the one with the property that a small perturbation of x leads to a large change in f x. Now, condition number can be uh, are of two types absolute condition number and relative condition number. Let us see how we define an absolute condition number. Let us say delta x denote a small perturbation of x and uh, uh, delta f denotes the uh, change in the value of f corresponding to the change delta x in the value of x. So, delta f is equal to f x plus delta x minus f x. Then the absolute condition number k uh, which is uh, k f x because it depends on f as well as x. So, k f x of the problem f at the point x is defined as k f x equal to limit delta tends to 0 supremum norm of delta x less than or equal to delta. Uh, of norm delta f over norm of delta x. Now, here when we say norm of delta f, norm of delta f is the norm that is the norm in the space by because uh, norm of we got delta f is equal to f x plus delta x minus f x. So, uh, uh, f x plus delta x and f x uh, 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 they are the values of f in the uh, space by and therefore, norm delta f means the norm in the space by and in the denominator we have norm delta x this is uh, the change in the value of x that is the input data. So, here we norm by norm we mean that it is the norm in the space x. 
so when there is a very small uh, uh, i mean uh, when delta is very small okay then maximum uh, value of the ratio norm of delta f over norm of delta x is defined to be the uh, absolute condition number so uh, when delta x and delta f are sufficiently small we generally write kfx equal to supremum of over delta x norm of delta f over norm of delta x now if f is differentiable and uh, then we can evaluate the condition number by means of the derivative of f up to a first order approximation up to a first, first order approximation means the uh, 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 second and higher order powers of delta x may be neglected so then up to the first order approximation the definition of derivative yields us delta f equal to gx delta x if f is differentiable uh, we can evaluate the condition number by means of the derivative of f up to a first order approximation means uh, the uh, second order and higher order terms containing delta x are uh, neglected so up to first order approximation the definition of derivative yields us delta f is approximately equal to jx into delta x where jx is the jacobian matrix and uh, as you know the jacobian matrix is the matrix of all first order derivatives a jacobian matrix it is the matrix of all first order derivatives uh, of a vector valued function so if f is a function from rn to rm rn to rm okay then uh, the jacobian of f let us take any x belonging to Rn, if f is a mapping from Rn to Rm and x belongs to Rn, then the Jacobian matrix of f is defined as that is this is equal to this is delta f1 over delta xn here we have delta f2 over delta xm and so on delta fm over delta xn so we get m by n matrix this uh, this row has got m uh, this matrix has got m rows and n columns so if f is a uh, mapping from rn to rm that is it is a vector valued function which takes as input the vector x belonging to rn and produces an output uh, the vector fx belonging to rm then the jacobian matrix j of f is an m by n matrix as we have uh, seen here uh, this can also be written as
where I denotes the row and J denotes the column. Uh, for example, uh, this can also be written as Here, the vector x belongs to R n. This x we have taken as uh, R x 1, x 2, x n and f 1, f 2, f m are the uh, m components of the vector valued function f. For example, let us consider this would be f 1 and this will be x 1, okay. x 2. Uh, uh, x2. Okay, so uh, he, this is m by n matrix. Uh, so when we have a uh, vector valued function f from R n to R m, okay, then the Jacobian matrix is of size m by n. We can also express it as delta f1, f2, f m divided by delta x1, x2, x n. Now let us take an example on this to make it clear. Suppose we take a function f from R cube to R square. where uh, it, f is defined as x1, x2, x3, a vector in R cube as um, 5x2, 4x1 square uh, minus 5, uh, 2 sin x2, x3, So let us take a function from R cube to R square which is defined as f x1 x2 x3 equal to 5 x2 4 x1 square minus 2 sin x2 x3. Then let us find the Jacobian of f with respect to the vector x that is x1 x2 x3. So what we will have then j of x where x is let x be equal to x1, x2, x3, then j of x is equal to, okay. So, f has got two components. So, this is f1, uh, f1, x1, x2, x3, this is f2, x1, x2, x3. So, f has got two components. So, delta f1 by delta x1 and then delta f2 by delta x1 we will have. Then delta f1 by delta x2, delta f2 by delta x2, and then we have delta f1 by delta x3, delta f2 by delta x3. n is equal to 3 here, m is equal to 2. So we have 2 by 3 matrix, okay. And this is equal to, now when you differentiate f1, x1, x2, f1, x1, f1 is a function of x1, x2, f1 is equal to 5 x2, and f2 x1 oh, x1 x2 x3 and f2 x1 x2 x3 this is equal to 4 x1 square minus 2 sin x2 x3. So, we can find the Jacobian matrix easily when you differentiate f1 with respect to x1 you get 0 when you differentiate f1 with respect to x2 you get 5. When you differentiate f1 with respect to x3, you get 0. When you differentiate partially f2 with respect to x1, you get 8x1. And then you differentiate f2 with respect to x2. So you get uh, minus 2 cos x2, x3. Into x3. And then Del, uh, the derivative, partial derivative of f2 with respect to x3, we will get again as minus 2 cos x2, x3 into x2. So, we will get a 2 by 3 matrix. So, Jacobian of f, uh, which is defined from r cube to r square, gives us a matrix of size 
2 by 3. This is how we can define after in the Jacobian matrix. So, let us go back to uh, our discussion of uh, the uh, condition number. Uh, we see that delta f is uh, approximately equal to g x into delta x where g x is the Jacobian matrix of the partial derivatives of f at the point x. Uh, now, here when norm of delta x goes to 0 that is norm of de delta x is sufficiently small the condition number becomes this like this. See when uh, norm of delta x goes to 0 Okay. That means, delta x is sufficiently small so that we can neglect uh, the second and higher order terms containing delta x. Then k of x, k of x is equal to supremum of norm of delta f divided by norm of delta x, delta x. So, it is the maximum value of of uh, uh, all uh, 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 perturbations delta x in the input delta x. So, this is uh, this when delta x tends to 0, uh, we can take delta k of x to be approximately equal to norm of delta f over delta norm of delta x. So, when delta x is infinitesimally small k of x can be approximately taken as equal to norm of delta f divided by norm of delta norm of delta x but just now we have seen that norm of delta f is equal to delta f is equal to j x into delta x. So, since delta f is approximately j x into delta x norm of delta f will be equal to norm of j x into norm of delta x. So, let us put this value there. Okay. So, then k of x is approximately equal to norm of g x. So, when delta x is sufficiently small the absolute condition number is approximately the norm of the Jacobian matrix, uh, where norm of Jacobian matrix uh, the norm of the matrix g x is the norm induced by the norms on x and y. Now, let us go to uh, the relative condition number when we are concerned with relative changes we need the notion of relative condition. So, the relative condition number k of x is defined as k of x equal to limit delta tends to 0 supremum of norm of delta x less than or equal to delta and then norm of uh, delta f divided by norm of f x divided by uh, norm of delta x divided by norm of. So, it is the quotient of the relative change in f divided by the relative change in x. You can see norm of delta f over norm of delta uh, norm of f x gives us the relative change in f and norm of delta x divided by norm of x is gives the relative change in x. So, it is the uh, quotient of the relative change in f and the relative change in x. And, uh, we take delta to be sufficiently small it is going, going to 0. So, when delta x is sufficiently small okay, we can say that when delta x and delta f are sufficiently small k of x is approximately equal to norm of delta f divided by norm of f x divided by norm of delta x divided by norm of x. Now, when delta x is sufficiently small we have seen okay, delta f is approximately equal to g x into delta x where g x is the Jacobian of f. Okay. So, you can write it also as f x j f x. 
So then what will happen here is that again, uh, uh, so um, uh, replacing G, uh, norm of delta f by uh, this one, G, norm of gfx into norm of delta x. So replacing norm of delta f by norm of gfx into norm of delta x, we get kfx equal to uh, norm of, so this is norm of gfx into norm of delta x divided by norm of fx into norm of x divided by norm of delta x. So, this will cancel and we will get uh, this as same as norm of j f x divided by we write it like this norm of f x divided by norm of x. So, k f x is given by the uh, norm of the Jacobian matrix of f j f x divided by the norm of f x over norm of f. So, this is the case when f is differentiable, we can express the Jacobian number, uh, the condition number k, k f x, which we also write as k in terms of the Jacobian of uh, norm of the Jacobian matrix of f. So, now this is the formula we have. Now, let us remark here that uh, the absolute and relative condition numbers both are used in uh, literature, but the condition, relative condition number is more important because the floating point arithmetic used by computers introduce relative errors rather than absolute ones. We have seen that uh, by examples we have seen the, the information that we do not get about the accuracy of the numbers uh, from the uh, absolute error. The absolute error is same in both the cases, but when we found out the relative error, it turned out that one uh, approximation is better than the other. So, relative numbers are used in the floating point arithmetic, relative errors are used. So, uh, now addition, multiplication, division with positive numbers are well conditioned problems because when we carried out uh, carried out addition, multiplication, division with positive numbers, we have seen that uh, the, the there is no appreciable uh, error in the uh, relative in the relative error. Uh, so, uh, so, that the whatever change is there in the relative error as a result of addition, multiplication, division operations that is uh, not very uh, large when uh, the relative errors in x and by are small, uh, the relative error in x plus by r x into by r x over y is also small, which is acceptable. So, they are well conditioned problems, but subtraction is not a well conditioned problem because we have seen that when we subtract to nearly equal numbers, there may be uh, a situation where the uh, relative error gets too large. So, uh, subtraction cannot be uh, taken as a well conditioned problem. Now, let us illustrate this uh, 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 article or let us find out the uh, condition number in case of some uh, examples. Consider the problem of computing root x for x greater than 0. So, we are given the function f from x to root x here, which is defined as f x equal to root x. So, f is a function from, from r into r, f is a function from r from a normed vector space r into r defined as f x equal to root x, x is given to be positive. Now, here Jacobian of f will be what? Because here m and n, okay? uh, m and n both are equal to 1, so the Jacobian matrix will be of uh, size 1 by 1. That means, Jacobian matrix of f with respect to x will be the partial, the derivative of f with respect to x. Okay? f is a function of one variable, so we can write df over dx, which is equal to 1 by 2 root x here. Now, uh, condition number k of x will be equal to uh, norm of uh, j x relative condition number we are going to find this divided by norm of f x divided by norm of x. In case of r, we norm of x is defined as mod of x 
and norm of fx will be defined as mod of fx and so this and norm of gx norm of gx will be uh, mod of gx which is uh, 1 by 2 root x so 1 by 2 root x divided by fx is equal to root x so root x divided by x we have okay norm of x is equal to mod of f x and norm of fx equal to mod of fx in case of r so this is equal to 1 by 2 norm of gx equal to 1 by 2 root x norm of fx equal to root x and norm of x equal to x so this gives you 1 by 2 uh, and therefore we can say that the problem is well conditioned so the problem is uh, well conditioned here so when we find when we find out uh, root x for a given uh, value of x the input data x then the uh, problem of computing root x from x is a well conditioned problem now we go to another uh, case where f is a function from r is c square into c f is a function from c square into c c is the set of complex numbers and the function so let us say let x1 x2 be an element of c square x equal to x equal to x1 x2 be an element of c square then fx is defined as x1 minus x2 now here uh, we again find the in, uh, condition number so here gf let gfx what is gfx here here x is equal to x1 x2 f, f is a function from c square into c so n is equal to uh, n is equal to 2 here and m equal to 1 here so we will get 1 by 2 matrix and that 1 by 2 matrix will be delta f over delta x1 delta f over delta x2 this 1 by 2 matrix okay because the components of f uh, there is one component of f that we can write as f so delta f over delta x1 delta f over delta x2 and this is equal to 1 and minus 1 now the norm in c we are taking as infinity norm okay so norm of gx gfx infinity norm this is matrix norm okay matrix the, in, the infinity norm in the case of matrix is defined as maximum absolute row sum if you have let's say let a b equal to a i j m by n we have a m by n matrix a equal to a i j then the infinity norm okay on the matrix a is defined as maximum of this is means that maximum absolute row sum maximum absolute row sum you can see uh, here j runs from 1 to n so we have if you take i equal to 1 then you have mod of a11 mod of a12 plus mod of a1n and then in the second row you have taken i equal to 2 mod of a21 mod of plus mod of a22 and so on plus mod of a2n so you find find the absolute values of all uh, entries in the row and then take their sum and once you have done it for all rows find take the maximum value of that so here what do you see here there is only one row okay so uh, if you take the uh, uh, row sum absolute row sum then 1 plus 1 it is equal to 2 okay and there is only one row so this is the maximum value so norm of j infinity equal to 2 and therefore the condition number is
Now, norm of f x in C is same as mod of f mod of f x. So, this is equal to uh, uh, this is uh, this infinity norm here. So, we have 2 ok and then this mod of this we have mod of x 1 minus x 2 because f x is an element belonging to C uh, which is x 1 minus x 2. So, mod of x 1 minus x 2 and norm of x norm of x we take as uh, maximum of f infinity norm maximum of mod of x 1 mod of x 2 uh, which is the infinity norm in uh, c square. So, now we can see here uh, this k ok k is large if x 1 minus x 2 is approximately equal to 0 and so the problem is ill conditioned when x 1 and x 2 are nearly same this thus matching with our int int intuition of the hazards of cancellation error. In the case of cancellation error, we can we have seen that the uh, relative error gets uh, uh, when becomes very large. This means that the condition number becomes very large. So, the problem is ill condition and uh, if x 1 and x 2 are nearly equal here. Uh, then we can take the problem of f x equal to e to the power x here f prime x. So, f is a mapping from r into r. Let us say f x equal to e to the power x. So, f is a mapping from r into r defined as f x equal to e to the power x. So, f prime x we can find f prime x equal to e to the power x because in the case of uh, uh, m and n both equal to 1 here the Jacobian matrix j is 1 by 1 matrix which is the derivative of f ok. So, j f x equal to derivative of f with respect to x or you can say f prime x. So, here uh, k f x will be equal to norm of j f x divided by norm of f x divided by norm of x. So, we have e to the power x we know. So, this is f this is equal to f e, e to the power x. So, e to the power x we shall have norm of j f x will be uh, the modulus of uh, e to the power x here divided by uh, norm of f x is again mod of e to, e to the power x. So, we have e to the power x divided by we have uh, mod of x ok. So, this is equal to mod of x. So, uh, we can say that uh, uh, the given function is well conditioned for x uh, near 0 uh, uh, because then the value of the condition number will be very small and ill condition for mod of x uh, greater, the greater than 0 that means mod of x is sufficiently uh, greater than 0. Uh, then we can take the problem of f x equal to ln x where x is greater than 0. Uh, so, here again uh, f is a mapping from r into r. Uh, f is a mapping from not r f is a mapping from 0 infinity into r it is not defined at 0. So, we can say 0 infinity into r f is a mapping from 0 infinity into r defined as f x equal to ln x ok. So, here again f prime x equal to 1 by x and so j f x equal to 1 by x and so k f x equal to Uh, j f x that is 1 by x divided by uh, uh, x times uh, f x. So, that is ln x f x is equal to ln x mod of ln x Divide, uh, mod of ln x divided by x because we have f dash x which is j f x divided by norm of f x norm of f x is mod of ln x divided by norm of x and norm of x is equal to mod of x r x because x is greater than 0. So, this is equal to uh, 1 over mod of ln x. So, when x is uh, very close to uh, 1 then ln x is close to 0. So, the function f x is ill conditioned uh, for x which is nearly equal to 1. With that I would like to uh, 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 close this discussion. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.